Hey everybody, it's Rob Essler. Again, we're going to start to learn how to program a little bit today using audio and music concepts with processing. And in order to go through these tutorials, you need to make sure that you have my processing library, which is in another video. And um, uh, if, but really quickly, if in case you have forgotten, let's go through how to just install that. So first of all, make sure you've installed processing. So let's just go to processing. And this is an integrated development environment, otherwise known as an IDE. And all you have to do is download it for your platform. And then it should open up a blank sketch. So it should look like this when you first open. And we will go through what some of the buttons and uh, options mean. And I'm going to explain what this is in a second. But then you have to install my library, which is think of it like a plugin. So you're going to go to github.com slash Robert Esler, my name. And you'll, you could either stop there and you can click on PD for P3, or you can go straight there using this link. And you click on this link here, which says basically you're going to download a zip file. And once you download it, you're going to copy it to your processing folder. So when you create processing or you download it, it creates a folder in your documents, unless you've told it somewhere else. And inside that folder is where you can put your library. So you copy that um, zip file to your library's folder, unzip it, and it should look like this. And that's all you need to know. So I'm going to close that. And this is again in the, another tutorial. That's just a quick review. It's this tutorial right here in case you need it. All right. So I'm going to kind of assume that you have almost no background in programming and um, this is not meant for programming to be an engineer in the sense of like you're going to build bridges and software for uh, NASA and uh, hospitals and you know things that could more or less kill people in if you do it wrong this is creative coding so um, the nice thing about that is if you do something wrong uh, you'd only kill your art form not your customers so we're going to start from the very beginning and kind of step through each process in the under the auspices of music and sound. And that's what this library has been created for. All right. So the first thing that we want to uh, understand is the concept of variables or things that store data and can change over time based on user input. Um, something coming from the software itself, a variety of instances of when variables may or may not change. So there's already some variables that exist. And what the way that we're going to get started is once you create a new sketch and you get a blank sketch, there's no code here. And if you hit run, nothing happens. You get a dummy window. So that's good. You haven't broken anything yet. So since we installed that library, it just comes with examples. So we're going to go to the file and to the examples portion. And um, the PD for P3 examples are under contributed libraries. So you'll see just a folder like this. And um, I have a, a bunch of examples that you can uh, look at on how to do certain things in the future. But we're going to start with the dummy template. And since I don't want to change the template, I'm just going to, so I'm going to copy everything. And I'm just going to copy it to my sketch and close the template so I don't make any changes I don't want to. And this template will get you started um, with making sound right away. And I'm going to show you how to do that without having to um, learn what every single line of code. Because you can see there's already like, you know, 61 lines of code that uh, you probably have no idea what they're doing um, and that's okay so we're actually going to just start start out with the sound uh, right away so that we can understand how variables work 
um, in the context of audio. Okay, so there's actually two parts to this. There's this is right here is sort of the processing part. So this is the stuff that processing uses to set up processing and to draw a window. Um, so like here's our window. Uh, this is what our background color is, right? Um, this is a function called draw that you can write code in and draw stuff onto your window. Um, and this thing here, dispose, says dispose. That does some cleanup at the end of your uh, sketch when, it, when you close the window so that you make sure that your computer doesn't get mad at you and things crash. Down here is the audio stuff. And this is where we're going to kind of focus right now until we start getting into doing stuff with the window and the graphics and other things like that. All right. So when we're talking about variables, we're talking about data. And that's the core of programming is you're manipulating data, which then the computer uses to make a sound or uh, draw something to the screen or display an image or play back a sound file. And data is where you tend to store and or change or manipulate these things called variables. And so I have one already created. All right. And so let's, let's talk about variables in brief. There's basically three types of variables. We have numbers. We have characters. So like alphanumeric characters. So you can store words, phrases, sentences, things like that. And then we have data. And the data is where things start to get fun because you can make your own types of variables, things called classes, that uh, behave in different ways. And that's kind of the core of programming in an object-oriented language. Right. So since processing is based in Java, a lot of the concepts are going to be Java-based. However, these concepts should apply to other object-oriented languages with potentially slightly different syntax. But if you are going into the audio world, C++ is sort of the standard. And you shouldn't have a hard time transferring this to C++ too much. Um, later tutorials will get into actually how to do that. But for now, let's just go over some basics and they should apply to other languages as we need them. So let's look at a variable real quick. So here is what's called a variable declaration. And I, you c going from left to right, you have to de declare the type of variable. And with numbers, there's really um, a couple of different types. You have numbers that are counting numbers which are called integers. So like just whole numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, and negative numbers. You have then decimal point numbers. And those are what are called sometimes floats or floating point numbers. And sometimes they're called doubles. So a double is also a decimal number. So I could give it a decimal point. And let's make a, a counting number or an integer. We'll call this i. And I'll, I'll show you in a second. But if I were to give it a decimal, right, what would happen is that it would just cut it off. It would say, you're, you're not the right type. You should be in a float or a double. OK, and the difference between float and double is just really how the computer calculates the number of decimal points. First thing we're going to do actually is um, all we're going to do is let's see let's jump to the third one not something called data so I want to make some, uh, a type of uh, variable of oscillator I'm going to give it a name OSC short for oscillator and I'm going to type new oscillator open parentheses, close parentheses, and colon. And this is a variable of type oscillator. And that's the third kind of variable, which is data. And data is something called classes, which make objects. Or think of them like things that exist in the real world. So a lot of uh, programming tutorials will use things like cars or shapes. 
to talk about objects. So we're just going to talk about sound things. And an oscillator is an object, right? It's something that oscillates back and forth. And so this kind of oscillator would be what's called a sine wave oscillator. So it generates a sine wave. Okay, so again, I have to declare my variables. And I'm going to do them at the top of this part of the, um, the code. But we're going to declare our variables in the beginning so that we can change them later on during while the program is actually running. Okay, so I have, I have my data here. I'm going to make an oscillator. Uh, so my variable name is called OSC. Then I have an integer here, and its name is i, and I gave it a value, right? So here, the value of a of a of a class or an object is this phraseology new, and then you do oscillator with the open and close parentheses. And this is something we'll talk about later. For now, you can just literally copy this so that we can get sound working from the very beginning. Um, and then f I have my floating point number or float. I gave it the name freak, short for frequency, and I just initialized it or I gave it a value of zero. Okay, so there are, th are uh, two of our three different variables. Let's make one more variable. We can, um, we have two kinds of characters. We have just character variables and I can basically give it a value of like letter A. So it's a single character. Uh, but more so you're probably, unless you're just dealing with single characters, you're more likely going to be using something called a string. And a string is a string of characters. So. So now we have our string of characters, and why doesn't it like that missing semicolon? Oh yeah. So we have our string of characters, and this is a good teachable moment. Make sure you have semicolons. These are like periods at the end of sentences. Every line of code ends with a semicolon. Otherwise, the the um, the program processing will think that everything after it is still code, and it will it won't work. It'll it'll give you that error that you just saw. And it tells you, missing a semicolon. Now let's use our variables. And let's actually, since we don't want a zero frequency, um, since our oscillator, right, it oscillates so many times per second, uh, let's give it something that we can hear. So well into the audible range, we'll give it a, uh, a number of 300. And this would stand for frequency. So frequency is in hertz. So cycles per second. So we're going to hear a, a pretty much a middle of the range oscillator. Um, all right, so let's put our variable to work. And we're going to down here where it says output L, output R. Think of that as like out, output to your speakers. So we're going to do oscillator. And this is, a, again, another little syntax thing that we're going to learn in more deep detail later. So you're going to type this, uh, oscillator dot perform, open and close parentheses. And inside of the parentheses, you're going to put our variable frequency. Okay, so this here oops, stands for this here. And anytime we change this number, okay, it will change here too. Okay, so for now, let's forget everything else except we got to do one thing down here. We have to free our oscillator because you never want to keep an oscillator. Oh yeah, actually let's save. Let's save our sketch, our sketch too. So we're going to save it as... So we've saved it and let's just hit run. So that's all it does, is you hear the frequency that you changed it to. So if we change the variable number and save our sketch and run it, so there's our, our low frequency. And um, I won't kill your ears with any, anything higher than that. But it's a, basically, it's a frequency, a sine wave at full volume uh, based on the input that you just gave.
Okay, so notice how we didn't even use this one yet, and we haven't used this one yet either, and that's fine for now. In fact, we'll just get rid of them because down here we don't really need them all that much. But we can um, use them up in the processing side of things. So um, let's though, let's add another variable. And we're going to uh, add an amplitude variable because it might have come out full volume in your ears and you didn't expect that. Um, sorry, this is the, the bane of programming audio, bane. Um, so this is our amplitude and it has to be between zero and one. Okay, and um, whenever you um, multiply any sort of audio signal by a number, right? it changes the amplitude of that num of that signal. Okay, so think of this. This is our signal here, and we're playing it back to our speakers on this line of code here. Right? We have our frequency here, which goes to our oscillator. Now we're going to just multiply that by our amplitude. And multiply in code is the star symbol, or uh, shift eight. So this is now saying take the output of the oscillator, which is a sine wave, multiply it by the amplitude, which is just a number, almost like a volume knob, and um, send it to our left and right speakers. All right, so now the sound is half as loud as it was before, or about six decibels quieter, which is a lot better. Okay, so Let's um, now take these variables and um, let's get to, um, let's try something new, okay, something that's not an oscillator. So let's actually, let me give you the, um, a really easy way to keep code uh, active but not use it. So if you do the two slashes, that a, creates a comment. As you see, I have comments here to help you. This is another way of doing a comment. You can do like a paragraph comment if you do the slash star and then the star slash and everything in between is a comment. If you do the double line, I'm sorry, the double slash, it is a one line comment. So these are ha handy just to write a comment like in line, like I've been doing here. So we're gonna comment out code, which is a really fancy debugging process. And um, not really, but it's a way to you can keep code and run your program. So now we'll run it and nothing happens, right? Because we've commented out that code. And I'm just going to keep this down here. So this is our output to our speakers, right? And we're going to try something new. We're going to try noise. And so I have a noise generator. And we do the same thing as we did before, except we call it noise instead of. Um, oscillator and we got to do the same thing down here noise dot free noise so you're going to basically type the name that you call it noise inside of here and this frees up memory around your computer it's it's a little bit of a hassle but it's totally necessary um, so you just have to get used to doing it and we're going to add a filter what's called a bandpass filter And we do it the same way. We declare our variable name and we give it a value, right? And with data or classes, otherwise known as objects, right? We give them the new, right? We're giving, we're making a new instance of the object. Okay, so that's just the Java thing that you have to do. Uh, think pretty much it's the same in C++. Um, and we can keep these for now. We can actually use them again in a different context. So now we're going to actually filter noise, which is um, something that you've probably done before. If you've done any sort of audio thing, you use a, a filter or an EQ to filter noise. So now we're going to do noise.perform and we're not going to use any other variables. We're just going to perform noise and we'll multiply it by our amplitude. Okay. so. Noise is like a random number between negative one and one. And it's so random that we can't hear any frequency, so we just hear what sounds like white noise. And um, 
Another thing you'll notice is that every time we do sound, uh, strictly sound and nothing else, uh, you're going to see this thing called perform. And that's what's called a method or a function. And we're, we're going to get more explicit into functions and where we're in Java they're called methods and what they do. But it's basically a way of outsourcing code so you don't have to have everything all in one huge right, line or one huge file of code. You can put things elsewhere. You can have functions to help organize what your behavior is for your programs. It's a lot easier to program that way. Otherwise, without functions, you're just you're going you're gonna to probably go crazy. Um, so anyway, we're going to multiply the output of our noise generator by our amplitude, which is, we set it, our variable amplitude to 0.5. And we should hear white noise. Great. So we hear white noise. Um, all right, so now we need to uh, filter that noise. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our bandpass filter. And we need to do a couple of things. So the bandpass filter, we need to set its um, frequency that it's going to cut off, or it's going to basically shape it. So this is set center frequency. I like that. OK, good. So this BP, which is the name of our bandpass filter, dot set center frequency so it's a lot like what we did with perform here similar idea this is a method as part of BP and we're going to put our frequency inside of the method which is called an argument and now we've set the frequency for our bandpass filter, but it should it will still do nothing. So if we play it, it shouldn't be filtered because we haven't actually done anything to the noise which exists here. So this is going to look a little funky, but it it's a really easy way to do it. So we're going to do noise dot perform just like we did, and we're actually going to put sorry bp dot perform, and we're going to put noise dot perform inside of the parentheses here. So one thing you'll find is that every single time you have a dot perform method, which is again, that's how our sound gets generated in this library. It's always a number. So it always outputs a number, which is um, actually a, of a floating type called double. And that number then is what gets sent to the output left and right, which eventually gets to our hardware in our computers that we hear as sound. And that's a, it's a really actually um, streamlined process, but it, it has a lot of layers to it and it gets really confusing fast. So this is as simple as I can make it. This goes to your speakers. Right? These output numbers right here. This line of code is just a number and that number just happens a lot of times every second. So you can hear it as sound many thousands of times. Okay, so now we should hear uh, noise filtered by our bandpass filter. So it should sound um like a whist like a like like well sound like this sounds like the ocean far away right so so we use our number variables right to change the frequency and the amplitude of our sound we use our data or our objects to create our sounds like noise or filter our sounds like bandpass or create oscillators like oscillator. We use basic math. So we have multiplication here. Okay. Um, we can also add and subtract and multiply, divide. All of the great, um, all of the great things that you do. So we could add in a oscillator too by just hitting plus. Copy, uh, we copy our OSC, click plus and paste. And um, this will not work. So we'll just add our, oops, 
burn a multiplier amplitude twice just because I believe to make things simple it's gonna do this first then this and then add those two together so we should hear filtered noise plus our frequency times our amplitude okay good so that worked all right so now you know how to use variables basic variables like floating points and how to make some basic um, objects uh, in our sound library and you can also make other variables like strings and give them values hello audio world right, which we didn't actually use because we're, we're doing audio so not necessary and we also have uh, d uh, characters wait no that's what that is so all right so in the next tutorial I'm going to show you now a little bit about um, methods and functions and um, how you can create your own classes and add your own variables or what are called members and functions and do really cool things with that thanks for watching I hope this was somewhat informative and if you are if you're all interested in learning more uh, graphical things or just kind of getting more uh, experience with processing I recommend you go to the processing tutorials and you start with hello processing and Daniel Schiffman has a really great series that's all interactive within the screen here you don't have to ever leave the screen which is great and you just click there to begin and it takes about an hour to go through and it will get you some more background in processing itself as well as reinforce some of the same concepts uh, that we're going through. I will see you next time.